If you're wanting to learn how to do IO, or maybe you haven't done IO in a while, or maybe you're new to the easy IO, um, this is the video for you. So what is this and why are we doing this? So our bones are living, right? They have a bunch of blood traveling through them all the time. And so we can place a needle into that bone and inject medication into that bone and that travels quickly into the bloodstream. So we can administer fluids, medications, whatever the case is, into bone when we aren't able to get IV access. So what is the process? First, we need to get all of our kit. Like usual, we have to prepare. Preparation is key. So we have our three-way stop, our fluids, our um, flush, all these things. We need to make sure we have what's ready, right? Prepping everything, flushing everything. Okay, got our tie down. So we have different sizes of needles uh, and we also need to have different landmarks. So the most common landmark is the um, proximal um, tibia. Uh, we can do the humeral head, we can do the sternum, we can do the, the pelvis and the iliac crest. So there's all these landmarks. Uh, we're going to be just be focusing on proximal uh, tibia because that's just the most common um, so we're going to talk about that landmark so on the proximal tibia we find the tibial tuberosity which is just just there where the ligament joins to the tibia and we go two centimeters down and medial it's a flat bone you you will feel the flat bone that's exactly what we're in so now that we have that we also are then needing to clean our site we've prepped all our stuff and we have found our landmark i'm wearing gloves how does this work? So what's important is when we choose our needle. So you'll see the needle comes like this. There is the part that goes through the needle, which has got a um, special name. And then that then stays inside there and make sure that when we do go through the bone that the bone doesn't plug our cannula, right? So how do we know how big of a needle we need? So on the needle, there are black lines. And what the manual says is that once you have stuck the needle through the skin, a black line needs to be visible. If you can't see a black line, it means that the needle is too small and you need to get a bigger needle, right? So that's pretty much what their guidance is. You get small needles, then you get bigger, then you get really big needles. The gun comes like this. The needle just attaches there with a magnet and it doesn't go anywhere. How does this work? So we have found our landmark. We're going to go at 90 degrees to the skin and we're going to push through the skin to the bone and you'll feel the bone. It's this hard, you know, rigid thing. It feels hard. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pull the trigger and you're going to apply firm pressure and it's going to drill in and you're going to feel this give kind of like when you're putting up the ivy line and you feel kind of that give into the vein. Similar thing, we push and we feel this give into the middle of the bone. So you push just gently and you allow the bone gun to do what it needs to do. There we go. And that's in. We hope. So now that that's in, the best way to tell that it's actually in the bone and not just in skin is that when you move the top of this, the whole bone moves. When the patient moves their leg, it moves. It becomes a part of the bone because it is in the bone. Then this part is then taken out and thrown in the sharps container. I'm just putting it there because this is for training purposes. Now what we're going to do is we're going to test that it's in the right place before I tie it down. Or I guess you can tie it down first and then test, but I want to test that it's working before I tie it down. So I'm going to connect on here. I'm going to then aspirate. I'm going to pull back. All right. And when I pull back, I should see blood. You can get bone marrow. You don't always get bone marrow, but you can get bone marrow. Then you're going to inject. When it comes to the injecting part, this is the most painful part of the procedure, right? I'd be happy for you to put the needle in my leg. I wouldn't be happy with you um, flushing it, right? So because the bone is made out of this web-like structure, the harder we flush it, the more of that structure we kind of open up. And the more of that structure we open up, the more and better this IO actually runs. So at this point, we actually should be applying quite a bit of pressure onto this to flush with quite some force. Some will say that you can flush with lignocaine. Typically speaking, the patient's in a really bad position as it is anyway. This is an emergency. Um, we need to get this done quickly. Then you're going to flush hard and then you're going to feel this give and, it then, and then it will then be flowing freely. Now that we know it's in, we can detach here and we can attach and then tie down. I don't want to waste a tie down if, um, if I don't know it's in, right? And then we can tie it down like this, that then ties to the leg and that attached to the top. And now we have our IO. Things that we are looking out for is that we want to make sure that the same bone is not fractured. So if their tibia is actually fractured, um, then we can't be putting an IO into that bone. 
or and if there's any infection to that bone or to that skin we obviously need to be careful of introducing infection into a bone um, that can obviously cause harm i have seen and i have done myself is that you put this into someone's leg and when you flush it actually fractures the leg common happened in like very small children or in very very old people because their bones are just that brittle that when you um flush it, it can actually um, crack the bone the other um, risk that comes along is that if you are putting it into a child's leg and your needle is too big or you have another device putting up a io and you're holding the leg and you're trying to get through the leg and then it goes straight through it goes into your finger behind the leg so just be very aware of what is behind the leg when you're doing this that more probably applies to children and that now we can freely administer whatever we need however if you're wanting to give a fluid bonus you're going to need to apply pressure to that so a pressure bag is what's going to be needed to actually be able to give a substantial amount of fluid or you're gonna to have to do a pull push method where you're gonna get your 50 ml syringe your three-way tap and pull 50 ml and push 50 ml because it needs pressure to actually push them to the bone so that is pretty much io in a nutshell thanks for watching if you have any questions let me know if you enjoy this kind of content you'd probably like this video too